No, it's interesting. One of the most hotly debated topics, I'd say 15 years ago, 10 years ago on hunting forums, Michigan Sportsman Forum, if you go back, you can actually look some of this stuff up that I'm talking about was where to bucks bed and buck, buck, buck bedding secrets. There are proponents of buck bedding secrets that would just almost victimize people on forums, make people look like idiots because they believed in some secret formula. And I'm here to tell you there's no secret formula out there. We're gonna talk about why bucks bed in a certain area, and it's pretty simple. Um, and, and what's cool about this, it does apply anywhere, and we'll talk about that too. And I've shared this for years, and I've shared it since that time back then and before that time, and it's, um, it's something that, um, as being able to scout whitetail properties for a living um, every year, and doing so for, for many, many years, since 05, you see this consistent pattern of buck bedding around the entire country, every state, every type of habitat there is. If you don't have some certain ingredients, it's very simple, then you're not gonna have buck bedding. Um, sometimes not doe bedding either, you know, consistently. And that's what you want, consistency, because if you don't have consistent bedding in an area or the consistent opportunity for bedding, then you're never gonna be able to create a quality herd or hunt during the hunting season. Who cares about that during the summertime? And they're still gonna to relate to these same principles, but you have to have these ingredients taking place in October, November, December. Who cares about May, June, July? You build a deer herd during the fall and early winter, not during the summer. I'll talk about with these secret ingredients, I'm not kidding, I avoided a lawsuit, and I'll talk about how we did that, but I actually, I had a call from Brian Murphy's executive director of the QDMA, and this is going back a ways say it was 2010 so we're talking almost be 12 years ago this summer I had a habitat day scheduled in the state of Wisconsin and that was in August and uh, what I do is I go to speak at these and I talk about buck bedding and talk about principles and foundation I used to go to a lot of those I've been to dozens of habitat days and facilitated those to try to help people better understand and in this case people were paying $80 $100 to come to it um, they paid me to speak. All the money went to that branch and organization of the QDMA as a nonprofit to help promote QDMA, help people get in the door, help increase membership. You know, there's all good causes for this and help people learn. I had gone to that person's land in February, March, designed a property, and I was coming back to do it. I got a call from Brian Murphy during the summer sometime. Let's say the event was in August. got a call in June. And, you know, is this event really important to you because someone is threatening to sue the QDMA, you, and an individual in the state of Wisconsin that helped facilitate this um, if you talk about the secrets of buck bedding. I'm not kidding, folks. And as Brian explained to me, if you get sued, you know, they could possibly help with attorneys would, that would work pro bono for on behalf of the organization, but it could, could be costly. Could be costly in time and money um, if you're sued, even if you are in the right. And so that, as, you know, 12 years ago, whatever it was, it was it was a little bit of eye-opener to that process, but I told Brian, this is what I do for a living. Um, how about we just say that I won't talk about any secrets? And, and that's how I avoided this. And we'll talk about why I didn't talk any, about any secrets, but I said, I'm not backing down. I'm going to the event. And I'm sure I found eight or 10 clients at that time from going to that event. So it was important to do so. Uh, not to mention a good organization with good people and a good day and uh, a fun day. And so even with all that, I made that promise. The lawsuit was avoided. There was still an individual that came from that entity, organization, whatever, to make sure I didn't misspeak. So what I did at the event, I said, this person's in the audience. There is someone that believes in building buck beds by these various secrets. They're that person. They know those secrets. I don't. Never gone to anything that had to do with that organization, so I wouldn't know what those secrets are, but there's someone in attendance. You can go talk to them if you want to learn those, then hire those people. But they literally sent someone out to that event to make sure that we didn't misspeak according to our agreement. Why did I know we wouldn't misspeak? Because there's no secrets. So it's pretty uh, easy to avoid misstepping with anything because... Bucks, does, all deer, 
bed and layered bedding. I've been writing articles about this probably since 08, 07, somewhere around there. Been recognized, recognized this for many, many years. And what I mean by that is that you have food right here. If you have no cover over here, a road, house, open pasture, and this is your cover, then this is a layer that does will bed. And if there's enough room left over, this is the layer that bucks will bed. So pretty easy. You have food, does, and bucks. The trick is to sandwich this in as close as you can and make sure you have solid cover from front to back so that you, for your area, for example, a wilderness area up north where there's not a lot of people, not a lot of deer, this full scenario from food to buck bedding might be three quarters of a mile, might be half a mile, might be a mile. When you get into coverless ag areas, that could be 200 yards. So, but the bottom line is you have to have cover for the deer to feel comfortable going from front to back through this area from bucks to go all the way, all the way to the front where that food area is and you have to protect that area. But the bottom line is food, does, bucks. Pretty easy, that's it. Those are my secrets, but there's no secrets. I've been talking about this for so many years. I talked about my first book in 2012, talked about depth of cover. And the cool thing about this is you can take this same scenario and it applies everywhere. It doesn't matter if this is private land, public land, it is the exact same formula everywhere. The only difference on public land sometimes is you don't have quality food sources. So if you don't have quality food sources, it's just random, low quality food everywhere. And there's nothing really that defines a daily movement. It's kind of the food source of the moment. That's what's cool in areas on public land, state or federal, CR, or, uh, commercial forestry, where you actually have clear-cut rotations. When you combine clear-cut rotations within the right age for deer to browse on it, for example, more southerly location within those first three or four years before it gets too thick for deer to utilize, within big hardwood northern areas that might be the sweet spot, might be three to 10 years, 12 years, where it's still low vegetation for them to browse on it. But once you find that sweet spot for those clear cuts, and then you add some diversity, low land, high land, in there where you have other plant species, then you can really narrow down where deer are at on public land. That's why I don't like hunting public land unless I have big marshes, swamps, hardwoods, stands of conifer where you have habitat diversity because if you're hunting big monocultures, not only is it hard to hold deer or find deer on a consistent basis, but there's no defined movement every day because you don't have that defined high quality food source. It's low quality food everywhere. Little secret, you hunt in big baiting areas like northern Michigan where you don't have ag, you don't have very many quality food plots. You have a lot of commercial forestry and in fact 80% of the UP in Michigan is corporate or public lands. Then you focus on those bait piles. Those does will be in those first 400 yards, 500 yards and those bucks will be in that half mile, three quarter mile, mile range away from that bait pile. Hardly ever coming to that bait pile during the daylight. That's why once they get to two, three years old, it's almost like it's easier for them to survive because they avoid those bait, bait piles during the daylight. It's pretty easy to whack every year and a half old buck, yearling buck, within a mile or two in any direction because they're dumb. They'll come right into the bait piles and you shoot them five minutes before dark or 20 minutes before dark. Once they learn to avoid those during the daylight or they're missed one time or two times, they get to two and a half. Those two and a halfs come even less. Those three and a halfs even less. Those four and a halfs, you can kind of get the picture. Not a lot make it to those older age classes, but they have a really good ability to survive in those situations because they've learned that those bait piles shouldn't be visited during the daylight. So that's what takes place on those public land areas. You know, bait pile, clear cuts, but it still applies. You can imagine if you have an overpressured bait pile, those does will be pushed further back into the woods. That means those bucks are pushed further back into the woods. That means do those bucks even relate to that bait pile anymore because they're pushed so far back. And that's why it's so important that not only do you have food, does, bucks in that order, but the, the more unpressured it is and the more consistent your cover is, the closer the gap you can hold those deer within in that same area. And again, it applies there everywhere. It doesn't matter if it's public or private land. And that boils down to depth of cover. You have to have that because let's say you have an 80 acre area. You know, whatever size, shape, you know, irregular on one side, little bumps out, whatever it might be. If you have that food right here, then it might support deer in several directions, corner to corner, if it's large enough. If you have food here, 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 then you have that depth. It's stretched out more in a linear fashion. That food is in this front layer right here. That means that 
deer are more likely does to bed up close to that food source all the way along that means you leave a lot of area back here for bucks it might be that if you have a 20 acre parcel and you have that food up here in the front then you have enough layers for does and then bucks immature bucks older bucks you have that true depth of cover if it's 20 acre parcel to 220 yards here 440 yards here then from that food source you have about 300 yards of depth that'd be the same amount of depth here you can see with a larger 80 acre parcel you could obviously hold a lot more deer have a lot more movements micro movements that go to those food sources the opposite of that is you have a 40 acre parcel you have a five acre food plot in the middle that means you only have 155 yards of depth in any direction until you hit a side that four that 40 acre parcel is 440 yards by 440 yards that means that only 155 yards is your depth versus 440 that means the very poor depth to cover ratio that food source is better off in a corner side somewhere so that you have this ultimate amount of depth and then if you have that you have layers for does and then enough room left over for bucks if you have open timber that hurts that depth you might have great cover up by the food that the does take over but if you have open timber after that and it's another two three hundred yards before you get to cover those bucks aren't going to relate to that food source and you want that food source to always represent the bottom of the funnel and daylight movement what that means is is that deer feed five times in a 24 hour period the first two times are in the bedding areas that third and all important time of the day is right before darkness 45 minutes before hour 15 minutes you want those deer to have the ability to get there because they have good cover from their bedding areas to the food source and that includes those bucks they have to have solid cover so if you have an open stand of hardwoods in between are they going to cross through that open stand of hardwoods in early november on the way to a distant food source for 200 yards probably not and that's why if you don't have that depth and consistent cover it won't be there but bottom line the reason i didn't get sued is because there's no secrets and that's what i talked about there this very same thing back in 2010 you know i've just made this stuff up in the last two years is something i've believed in and written about for many years in this layered bedding concept will bring true to your wildlife habitat and whitetail habitat anywhere a whitetail roams because does can tolerate a lot more stress and pressure does rule the roost does and fawns and family groups they're going to be closest to that food source whether it's 50 yards away 100 yards away those bucks are always behind them you know a lot of times bucks get to the field right at the last minute that's why if does and fawns and are, are coming to you and immature bucks are coming into the food plot five minutes before dark you're probably not going to see those mature bucks because it, they're a lot further away from that food source you know we're going out to hunt this afternoon last hunt of the day or last hunt of the year we're looking for it. it's extremely cold out it was minus 13 this morning it was just one a little while ago during late morning and it's supposed to be a high of four or five six degrees today those deer are on their feet and feeding especially with this high sun right here the winds died down a little bit they're hungry and they're they're feeding because it's replenishing the amount of energy they need to stay warm and to survive so they're going to be on those food sources but if we don't see those does coming into the field into the food sources into our green food plots that are covered in snow and crispy until five ten minutes before dark we're probably not going to see those mature bucks so it's really cool when you see them coming out it's getting too dark to shoot i think tonight is 509 is the last minute of shooting light and you can bet we'll wait till the last minute and then shut the doors on the blind shut the windows but if we don't see those does and phones coming out till five we're not going to see much if we see them coming out at 3 30 quarter to 4 4 we get excited because there's a lot of time left over for those mature bucks to come in and we're hoping to see 7 4 or the big 10 tonight either one of those neighbor calls a big 10 jam 4. so jam 4 7 4 they're they're high on our list and i'll welcome any other one that wants to step out that's in that five six year old age class too we passed up a lot of four year olds so i'm not hitting one of those tonight but you know they have to come in during that bottom of the funnel of daylight movement those does and fawns have to come in that 45 minutes an hour before dark and start moving through in order to expect those bucks to come because of that layered concept obviously a buck that is bedded back here and does here he has a lot further to travel whether that's 200 yards more or 500 yards more he's got a lot more to travel he's got to feel comfortable all the way there he doesn't want to feel any hunting pressure he wants to have cover all the way there probably a little browse on the way in too and if you think food does and bucks in that layered bedding approach that will not only help you build your property it'll help you scout on public land scout new private land parcels in my case it helped me avoid a lawsuit and be able to talk at a habitat day 
back in the day. Just talking about simply what I see in the woods instead of relying on some silly secrets that were once out there. Instead, just take this knowledge to the woods and you'll be on track to finding buck beds wherever a buck beds in whitetail habitat on public or private land this off season, next season, and beyond. Folks, I wanna make sure you check out my web class video series, whether it's how to design your food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes so that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.